What is up, Juventus fans? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the latest update of your favorite show, The Transfer Meter Show. Um, just to let you know, so we've got a little things a little bit differently here. Well, not really differently. The really thing that I want to do here is um, going with this channel or with this episode, I'm going to go a little bit more quick hit rather than going in detail, talking about each little player a lot. I really want to just let you know the update. I feel like a lot of you may prefer that rather than long-winded me <laughs> giving my thoughts on every player situation. Basically, what I'll do, we have 11 guys that we were, that we're trying to move, that Juventus is trying to move, and the situation with them going forward, you know, it can be a little bit sticky, a little bit, um, you know, um, un underwhelming <laughs> for a lot of the fans. So basically what I'm going to say is I'll give you the player, give you the percentage, and then I'll basically tell you how likely they are to be going, and if they if they are likely, what's the destination that we know the latest about? So that's what we'll do. Stick with us, and let's do it now. <laughs> Ciao, Rigazzi. Welcome back. You're in the Bianconeri zone, and you're in Transfer Meter, one of, our, uh, one of some of your all's favorite shows, at least from our numbers wise. So I appreciate all of you checking in and checking this out. Uh, hopefully, this helps. Uh, you know the long days that we've had so far with the. Uh, transfer market and the way that it's been going, you know, some of the unfortunate uh, either movements or lack of movements, honestly, that we've had. Uh, hopefully this has helped make your day a little bit easier uh, as we go about this. So anyway, let's just jump into it. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, the 11 names that we have, uh, go through each of them, what their most likely destination is, and then we'll leave it open for uh, any kind of communication. And if you want, maybe some questions later uh, when we do the live later today um, with uh, Julian joining me. So let's go ahead and let's just jump into it. Our number one option of the day, and we kind of do this, we kind of go uh, hot to cold, basically, when it comes to this. Uh, so we're not leaving it a lot up to, um, you know, you're not on the edge of your seat. Will, will this guy be hot? Will this guy be cold? You know, we're coming. We're starting hot and then we're going cold. All right. So number one that we have is Marco Piazza and the situation with him. Let's switch up this background. There you go. We got the green background lit up for you guys. Um, he's basically a go. He's about a 99% uh, chance of going. Where we uh, the latest rumors, most of the rumors seem to point toward uh, Torino being the Torino being the ones that are interested in him, and that the, the uh, deal will more, more than likely get done. Um, again, I'll just give this one my one thought on Torino. Not really a big fan of Cairo and his uh, practices and his like thoughts when it comes to Juventus. Not a big fan. I understand their rivals, but like the rivalry is not the same as other rivals. If that makes sense, you're in the same town, but y you're not at the same level. Anyway, let's move on. We got Piazza. He's more than likely going 99%. He's in the highest green that we have. Um, we I'm not really going to do a lot of different shades because it can be kind of messy. We'll do like basically green, yellow, red, or yellow, orange, red. So just so you know. Let's move on. The next one that we have is uh, Gianluca Frobolta, which seemed pretty cut and dry. And he is green and he's still at 99% chance of going. The issue is it's not as clear as it used to be. Uh, when it came to Frobolta, and literally until... Um, well, when I'm filming this tonight, I guess when this drops last night, we'll say that, um, depending where you are, too. Anyway, not that it became less likely that he'll go, but it's just the location and destination seems to be topsy-turvy now. So originally, basically, it seemed all but done that there seemed to be a deal with Atalanta and Juventus. We kind of thought, had the feeling that we're good to go for both of us going to Atalanta. No more questions. Now it's a little bit more sticky with the situation going on with Atalanta. I do have a little bit of a quote to read. And like I said, I know I said I wouldn't slow it down. But there's like one quote that I thought was pretty important. Uh, read, uh, or sent out by uh, Nicolo Shira. He said that Gianluca Frobolta, seduced and abandoned by Atalanta. I loved his words. Um, was seduced and abandoned by Atalanta. They had understood for one week, basically, that the deal was a deal. And they agreed with Juventus, basically, for the most part. It's just all but finalized. Anyway... They closed for Pezzella today, you know, uh, for that player as well. I know there were some flags thrown up where like, oh, maybe they're not going after Dimeral or whatever the situation with them. We don't know as it stands right now. But for the fullback from Juventus, there were three still Italian uh, clubs and one foreign club for them to still land at. It appears the options right now appear to be Genoa, uh, which are the first to look at him, which had the highest interest that we have right now. We had Verona and Sampdoria. So those are the options that really appears like he'll go to more than likely, I would guess, an Italian club. Or there's FC Basel, Basel, 1893. Don't know a lot about them, but that's the other club that's interested in him as well. Uh, B-A-S-E-L. Let me know. Anyway, I know that I don't know a lot about him, but you know what I mean. Anyway, so that seems to be the options right now when it comes to for Gianluca Frobolta. He's still pretty likely to go. We still have a 99% out that he'll be either loaned out, sold, whatever it may be. 
but he will more than likely not stay at Juventus. And now we know he will not be going to Atalanta for the upcoming season. Let's move on to our next option on the list. And that would be number three, Mary Dimaral. And uh, honest, I don't know where to put him. I could go yellow. I could go green. It just depends right now. I'm going to keep it green for now, honestly. Um, that's up from last week. Uh, he's at about a 60% chance of um, leaving the club. So I am I could go yellow, but honestly, let me just do this to switch it back and forth for a little bit. There you go. That's the situation, basically, with uh, Demerol right now. Actually, I'm going to say green. I'll probably bump it up. We made these graphics. Um, the latest news hasn't really hit, but as it seemed, uh, within the last 24 hours, it was uh, Atalanta were going hard for Demerol. They wanted him. They wanted Demerol. They wanted him to come to the club. Then, at uh, the latest, uh, Bor- uh, Borussia Dortmund stepped up, and now they've really um, injected themselves into the conversation as a landing spot, a destination for Demerol. Seems that he might be interested in going. Um, definitely can get some playing time, hopefully there. Um, definitely could get some at Atlanta as well. Depends what they'll do. But the latest reports also have reported that supposedly now both clubs are willing to potentially pay that 40 million, uh, you know, euro price. So we'll see. Maybe Juventus, are they going to luck out into a bidding war? I don't know, but let's keep an eye on it. We'll see what goes on from there. But it seems likely that Demerol will be on his way out. I know there's a lot of you that are Demerol fans, and I understand. I, You know, I'm I'm a supporter of Demerol, too. I liked him. I like what he brought to the table. I liked his energy, his passion. Uh, maybe his passion led to too many uh, yellow cards, honestly, for the most part. But he definitely seemed to be, you know, a potential future for the defense. It's unfortunate the way it worked out. But no offense, I don't think you can turn your back on Chiellini and Benucci right now, especially with what they put in in the Euros and showed there and what they put into the club and the history. You can't turn your back on them. The Licks a mainstay. Sorry, Demerol. You're a um, you're a enticing option for a lot of teams, and we need money right now. So this, that's the way it's got to be. That's business, unfortunately, guys. Anyway, let's move on to number four. We have Mattia De Chilio, and unfortunately now we are solidly in the yellow range. We've got a 50% chance of him staying or going. Um, I honestly think it might be a little bit lower on him going, really, just because, like, what kind of options do they really have? You know, we talk, we've talked about it without throughout the weeks. Um, if you've checked into any of our lives, and I entice, I entice you, I would ask you to please check out our lives. I think uh, Julian really brings a lot to the table. Um, he's got great... Uh, vast amount of knowledge when it comes to all these players, um, different clubs, different, you know, the, he's a, he's a coach. He actually coaches uh, football um, or if you're American soccer, whatever you want to call it. I know some of you get mad about it. Uh, like most of the people on the channel, honestly, don't seem to get mad because it's confusing for some of us here locally. But anyway, I appreciate it. But anyway, check in for those lives. He really brings a wealth of information and uh, especially when it comes to strategy, stuff like that, that you really want to hear. Uh, check in for him. I'm more of the uh, sideshow act, <laughs> really, for the most part. But I try to have fun. I try to uh, bring some energy uh, with what we're doing here. Anyway, uh, DeShelio right now, I don't know the options that come for him, really. There's not a lot that have really been out there and really pushing for DeShelio. But there's still a chance that somebody might scoop in and get him. You know, a lot of the uh, French clubs seem to like what he brought. It's unfortunate the way it worked out with Lyon that they weren't, um, they didn't stick with him. But we'll see what goes on from there. That doesn't mean that all of our options below us don't have options, though. So we'll see. Or the other listed, not options. Anyway. All right. Um, well, okay. Maybe I'm wrong. I might be wrong, actually, because now we're moving into number five. And that is Aaron Ramsey. And the situation with Aaron Ramsey, you know, if you're a fan of Juventus, it's been ongoing. We've been trying to push this man out the door now. You know, I thought we kind of made it clear. I remember the beginning of last season with Andrea Pirlo. You know, it wasn't going to fly. You're not really a part of the plan. He had that one game, uh, the very first game where he had assisted. I don't know, maybe not the one game. He had one other a couple of occurrences where he, where he did provide something, but never really provided a serious amount of depth for the club in the long run. Um, anyway, what he provided that time, yeah, he has provided that assist in that first match uh, under Andrea Pirlo. I think it was against Sampdoria, if I'm correct. Um, anyway, so, you know, he just never never added up. I just don't understand. Like he's right now, you know, trying to like push your state Juventus. I guess it might just be collect that paycheck while you can. Only problem though is, you know, there's not a lot of clubs that I was kind of hoping that would be kind of lining up at the door to get him, especially in the premier league, you know, uh, Arsenal, who's just trying to go after every play that we go after anymore. Um, you know, nothing there, unfortunately seems to be working out. And especially in the other clubs right now with the premier league don't have a lot of interest. So, unfortunately, he's still staying with us right now, unless something happens. There's also the talk about Barcelona with Pjanic and all that switch. Uh, I'm not a big fan of that switch regardless. 
But um, definitely, you know, if he would have gone, but I don't think they really had serious interest in Ramsey and they put the kibosh on that pretty quick. All right, let's move on to number six. And then we got another orange one for you. He's at 40 percent. Uh, sorry, Aaron Ramsey was 40 percent and Ashley was 50 percent. I think I said those, but just want to make sure in case I forgot. But now we uh, got another 40 percent. And that is of Radu Dragusin, the uh, Romanian the defender, uh, center back for Juventus. Uh, Main issue with him, here's the thing, is he's not going to have a lot of playing time because we know we have a lot of center backs are ahead of him. Same reason why Damaral is going to be on his way out. Well, besides money, is that he also wants playing time. Um, you know, we're not going to be able to unless, you know, which is still likely that, you know, Chiellini Bonucci could suffer injuries or delict even. Uh, but at the same time, uh, Radu Dragusin is farther down that list. The really only way that Radu Dragusin goes out, and it doesn't seem likely now, is uh, just through the deal with uh, Sassuolo, who were interested in him. But I feel like at this point right now, when it comes to, um, you know, everything with the swap deal or whatever, or the deal with Locatelli, they more just want to find out a deal with cash and some kind of making money. I think they've kind of like... Um, just falling away from the player deal. We'll see if it resurges. Uh, we know they're going to meet later this week. I hate that it's so much later this week because if it doesn't work out then, then we're stuck waiting for another long week. So we'll see what happens. Anyway, seems like Radu Dragusin will uh, probably stay with the club. I know our Romanian friends that are here in our community um, will be happy to hear that. Hopefully we'll get some playing time. Um, it'll be difficult for him to see the field, but you never know whenever you know injuries come up. You at least got to see him in the preseason yesterday. Or two days ago, I guess, when this drops. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's move on to our next one. And that would be number seven. And that is uh, Cristiano Ronaldo. Um, let me see. With these last few, do I want to... Mm, I'll leave him orange just because I'm not completely certain on him yet. We do have the latest news that he did arrive in at Juventus uh, or in Turin. He's in Turin. I think kind of Pavel Nedved even kind of said, and I apologize, in the news video yesterday, I had the um, the graphic, but I totally forgot to mention him. I skipped ahead to Dybala. But, you know, it's kind of been pretty, the consensus seems to be he actually is going to stay now. Um, regardless of what appears, maybe PSG might put up a fight at the end. We'll see. We'll find out if they actually do end up pushing for him. But for right now, he seems to, he is in Turin. He seems here to stay. That's what Pavel Nedved said. That's what the club is working on. They're working on you know, with the idea that he is staying and he's going to play. And basically, if you suit up for any of these matches coming up soon, you're staying with the club. You're not going anywhere. Um, that's that's the way it works right now. Juventus doesn't plan to sell him for this coming season, which is fine. I think, you know, especially when you go through the long list of who you're going to replace him with. I know a lot of people like to bring up the striker situation. Honestly, my idea and what I feel right now is if Cristiano Ronaldo, if this is last season, this is last season. But if he ends up playing it out, don't add any more strikers unless you can get somebody really cheap on the cheap. But I would just pursue Vlahovic next season. What, my man had like seven goals, I think, yesterday. And it was a preseason match, you know, not great competition. But at the same time, he put on a hell of a show. He knows how to score. I want him next season. Let me know your thoughts. Anyway, we're on outgoing, not incoming. Anyway, so let's switch it up. Let's go back to number eight. And then we've got Federico Benedeschi. Uh, he's a 30% one, like I told you right now. It's just honestly, Juventus is not really working on trying to push him right now because they've got so many guys ahead of him that they need to move or they want to move or they can move. Um, and they also, the, you know, the rumors that Allegri can work with him and thinks that maybe he can do something with Benedeschi for this upcoming season. Um We'll see what happens there. But honestly, Bernadeschi ain't going anywhere. Get used to it. I know there's a lot of people who've been pushing it for years now, but he's staying for, for everything that we know right now unless something crazy pops up. And I think he basically decided, I want to be here too. I don't even want to look elsewhere right now, which he's kind of done recently. You know, I guess the one thing I could say is, you know, I I know there's a lot of anti Bernadeschi. I'm not as hard on the anti Bernadeschi. I understand not 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 you one of Juventus's best players not doesn't bring a, a ton to the table but at the same time um you know I'll, I'll give him a pass because he hit he made he actually scored those two euro um uh penalty kicks when other guys weren't able to finish it so he you know, technically he had the winning one so it is what it is I'll give him a pass for now let's move on number nine is a Nicolo Fajoli in the situation with him you know that was another one situation similar to Radu Dragusin really was only going to be um, traded or, you know, sold or whatever. Basically used in the deal with us. Well, if they, if they were to want him for us to get Locatelli, doesn't seem like that's going to be the deal. that's going to be happening money. We already talked about that. One thing I will say right now 
And I feel like if, if you're one of these fans that's been pushing uh, Fajoli and that you think he's definitely going to be a big uh, deal for the future and can be, you should be pissed like I am right now because I'm pissed at him. And, I, you know, the players that showed up later, whatever was going on with them, the disciplinary action that Allegri had to take. And it was his, it was his one big shot. Really, or not one big shot, but his biggest shot. You know, he knew that he had this coming up. All you had to do was show up and play the damn game, and you didn't do it. And it's kind of disappointing. And it shows maybe he isn't ready right now for uh, this level of competition. I know it's a preseason. Take it what it will. But I think mentally and your maturity level plays a big part in it. Regardless, he's going to stay. I want him to get his chances, but I also want him to uh, make sure he shows up and gets it done the right way. We'll see. Uh, there may be further news that comes back. I may retract some of that harshness, but at the same time, it's just disappointing because I think a lot of fans have like thrown in their support for Fajoli and to see him kind of just come up short like that, not even on the field, just come up short, not even showing up on time or whatever have you that happened. Just ridiculous. Anyway, let's move on. Number 10, and now we can go down to the red, for sure red, and that is uh, Matia Perin. He's staying. There's no other uh, backup keeper options. The main reason. Uh, he wanted to push to leave. You know, you know the whole story. He wanted to go. He wanted to be the starting keeper. Unfortunately, Juventus doesn't have anybody else right now to be the, the backup keeper. They don't have any other targets. Sirigu was one of the big targets that was going to be uh, potential, but he ended up going. Uh, was it to you know taking Mattia Petting's spot? So he, he's not going anywhere. Um, they probably, were, I think, they were able to get him cheaper than they would have gotten it uh, for Perin. Uh, Perin. Uh, you know, that one goal he gave up did not uh, really impress me <laughs> yesterday. But at the same time, I hope he can step it up and be an integral part of Juventus for this coming season, especially if Chesney uh, has a, uh, a, you know, an injury or some kind of bad stretch going forward. But he's staying with the club, 20% chance of even leaving. And now our last one is the one that I'm most disappointed in the percentage. Um, that is uh, Daniele Rugani, um, captain <laughs> yesterday, if you saw that, or Sorry, I see you saying yesterday, you know, Saturday. Saturday was the captain. I know this is getting released a different day. Uh, but anyway, he was, he was wearing that captain's armband. And I don't know if anything made was more painful for me to see. Um, anyway, right now, he's the lowest one. 20% chance of leaving. Honestly, nobody is really pursuing that or really, you know, is going after him. Um, nothing, you know, I, I don't see him moving. And Allegri likes him. Allegri likes Rugani. Thinks he can get something out of him. I hope he, you know, the la the latest news that we really had of Rugani is that supposedly, I believe, yeah, yeah, yeah I believe, am I mixing up him in uh, DiCilio? I don't think I am, but I want to say, yeah, I want to say it was, uh, yeah, Lazio and Saudi were interested in Rugani. They liked what he did. I don't know how, because that's the season that scarred me the most of uh, every time he came in, uh, you know, to reprieve somebody else or whatever, played horribly on defense, gave up goal after goal after goal. Um, don't want him back out there. But unfortunately, it looks like he will be on the squad for the upcoming season. Hopefully, he can redeem himself in my eyes and the rest of the fans' eyes going forward. Um, that's all of our list that we have for you today. All 11 of the guys that we have the most likely to be sold, the least likely to be sold, um, the main options. Uh, let's make this a little bit happier. There's the blue. It's back again, a little more soothing on the eyes. Um, you know, or Zodi Blue. Anyway, that's what we have today. Let me know your thoughts on each of the options that we brought uh, your, to your attention today for this week's Transfer Meter outgoing show. We'll have the ingoing, uh, incoming show tomorrow. Make sure to check in with that. I know that one will hopefully um, interest you pretty well. Uh, anyway, let me know your thoughts on each of these uh, options. What you think about them potentially leaving, potentially coming, or not coming, uh, potentially leaving uh, where their destinations might be. Do you think there's a destination that I left off? If there it is, let me know. I always appreciate your feedback there, as long as it's constructive <laughs> for the most part. You know who you are, people. <laughs> anyway, I appreciate it. Thank you for checking us out. Uh, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Please like the, like the videos. We work hard on these and we want to provide the most content and the best content that we can. Uh, we're starting out and it's just, you know, we appreciate all the help that you can give and we'll try to give you as much as we can in uh, reciprocating that as well. So please like, like and subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell icon to stay notified with all of our latest drops. Then make sure you follow Bianca Neri Zone at Bianca Neri Zone on Twitter and Instagram. Follow me at Justin Sofer on Twitter. Forza Juve, Forza Bianca Neri.